All right, buddy, welcome back. Now that we're done with RIT, we're going to go ahead and talk about the collapsed core architecture. What in the world is that? Something collapsed, right? Well, what they're talking about is simply put is a two tier model. You remember your Cisco three layer model, right? Well, now the distribution and core layers work as one. Yes, they do. And your access layer would be the only other layer. And keep this in mind. Keep this in mind as you go through this. This is their design. This is their golden cup, the golden grail, right? All right. The primary motivation for the collapsed core design is diminishing network cost. Diminishing network cost while maintaining most of the benefits of a three tier hierarchical, I have to look at that, model. So they're trying to diminish the cost of that by putting that into two layers. But everything depends on the design of your network and the amount of devices you are using, such as what? Firewalls, layer three switches, routers, all these different things make that up. But let's go back in time. Let's go back in time and let's take a look at our three layer model, okay? This is the original. Cisco three layer model. We know this. This is in our CCNA, our original CCNA, all right, the 200 120 and before. All right, the core model, what is it? It's responsible for transporting large amounts of traffic quickly and reliably. That is its job. That's what it's there for. So you had your beefy routers on there, right? Sending stuff across. You have big pipes. You didn't have any access lists on there. Everything in there was just to send information across, all right? So the distribution, uh, the distribution layer, that was the workhorse. This guy was really doing all the work. Primary function is to provide routing, filtering, and WAN access to determine how packets can access the core, meaning how am I going to get the information that's down here all the way up to here, okay? That was his job, not to mention all the access lists and inter-VLAN, all these different things, right? So he was doing a lot of the work. And then the access layer, that's the desktop layer, all right, that's the one that gets to our users, right? Network resources most users need will be available locally. 80%, and this is something from the network plus, okay? 80% of all your resources should be local to your network. And I'll make a, a silly example, right? If you want to print something, right? You don't want to have the printer, let's say you're in a 12 floor building. And the only printer you have, because of cost efficiency, all right, it's on the 12th floor, and you're on the first floor, so you print to that printer on the 12th floor, you have somebody running down for you, or you're going up. It'll keep you in shape, but definitely not going to be very feasible, okay? So network resources most users will need will be available locally, locally to your floor, all right? But right next to you, if you can uh, gigabit or fast Ethernet switching are, are seen in this access there as well. So definitely gigabit is going to be hopefully everywhere. Uh, a lot faster up here, I hope. But definitely at the access layer, you want gigabit or fast Ethernet. Okay, you want that. You have fiber down here. Bless you. Okay, if not, oh well. But definitely, you know, once you get into the distribution and core layers, we want to see a much faster uh, delivery method. Let's take a look at visualization of the three layer model, right? A visualization. So here we have our access layer. Here you see the desktop, right? The normal switches that go down to the computers or the servers. Here we have the distribution layer, which is our layer three switches, which have routing capabilities, okay? Uh, you can do access list on there, all the all different, all sorts of different things. And then you have the core layer, which has um, the uh the speed all right that's gonna send out all right you have beefy routers on there and the pipes are huge and things are just gonna get from one side to the other notice though that you know they have that little bit of redundancy a little bit of redundancy going back and forth because pretend this is campus one and this is campus two all right let's say this is a college campus one campus two you have at least they have you know Two connections. If one router goes down, he still can go to that one, right? Uh, but there's no line in between these two routers. 
there's no line in between these two switches. There's no redundancy there. So that could be a problem, but that also can cost a lot of money. So that's what it boils down to is money. All right. So now we look at the collapse core architecture. Now everything that happened in three layers is happening in these two layers. So again, responsible for large. So these two layers are responsible for transporting large amounts of traffic and provide routing, filtering, and WAN access. So they're trying to put everything into one layer. But that's why I gotta tell you, you gotta remember, this is a guideline. Everything depends on the size, complexity, what uh, devices you're using in your network. This is just something that is okay, this is what they want, let's try to get as close as possible to it. That's all. They even say that for the previous CCNA. Okay, they, they say, well, you know, remember, just because it's three layers doesn't necessarily have to be three layers. It's right there in the book. Okay, right there in the book, per beta. All right, so just because it's two layers now, because if you get a visualization of the, and then of course we have our desktop, still remains the same, right? So, but you got more things going on up here. So now, equipment that didn't have to do things that it didn't do before, now it's got to do it. So that's a problem. So here is a drawing, a visualization, right, of the two tiers. So now here's a core and distribution layer right here, here in the blue. Okay, and this is green. I hope you see the colors correctly. All right, but there's two separate ones. Okay, access layer is access layer. That didn't change. What changed was right up here. All right, but here we have layer three switches. We have our firewalls up here as well. I put some firewalls in there just to put some more drama into it, okay? And we have our routers, but notice we have redundancy. Why did I do this? Why did I do three lines there? Ether channel, right? So we have redundancy going on here, all right? We can do our ether channel here so we can get more speed out of that. And then we have redundancy coming here to these firewalls because we, want, we don't want hackers to come inside our network, right? Security. And we'll talk about firewalls in a bit. All right. And then we see our firewalls that are connected again to these routers. And then these routers are connected to the WAN. All right. Which then goes out to another layer through your switch going somewhere else. Some website called the networking doctors.com. Okay. So, wow. That's a lot of stuff that's happening up here. If this is your design, you better have some good equipment up here. It just got more complex, more, more redundancy, which means more money. So if you're talking about, if you want, giga, you want gigabit and fast ethernet down here, now that you have this here, you better be running no less than gigabit. And definitely, you know, you're talking about when you go out to the WAN, that better be fiber. There better be no frame relay, no T1 connections going up there. That would be ridiculous. It better be Metro E. Or you better be running some, uh, you know, OC3 or OC5 lines or something going out there because you need fast. You need speed, okay? Because there's a lot of things that are happening now that just became responsibility of all these devices in these particular layers. And again, it depends on your design and the devices. How scalable do you want to make your network? How big is going to grow? When you're creating a network, and this is, you know, 101 here, network 101. When you're creating a network, you got to look into the future and say, how big is this company going to grow? And when you say how big, how do you measure big? You measure big based on how many routers are you going to have? How many little different locations that you're going to have to go across a wide area network are you going to have? Are you going to have? Five different campuses located in different counties, different states. Is it going to be across the world? All right. That's complex. All right. If it, it's the complexity part, that's the scalability. I'm sorry. The complexity comes, okay, am I going to just going to have routers? And then am I going to have a layer three switches that also have routing capabilities? You're definitely going to have firewalls, most definitely, if you're going across anything, whether it's just one county or Three counties or the entire United States or the United States and Europe, okay? So you're going to have firewalls, multiple firewalls, all right? Multiple routers, multiple layer three switches, all right? 
and definitely multiple uh, uh, layer two switches that they just deal. That's your access layer. But your, your core and distribution layers, those are now going to be the real workhorses. Okay. Knowledge for, I should say for, it says of your IT folks. Not, not yeah, get to know your IT, your IT people. You need to get to know them, but they need to know. Uh, they need to know the equipment that they're working with. And with this particular certification, they will, especially with this course that I'm putting out. Because you need to know if you're going to have firewalls, they need to know firewalls. If they're going to go ahead and you're going to put in, you know, some weird configuration in the routers, you need to know that they need to, they need to know how to network, period. Now, everything can be learned. Everything can be learned. All right. But definitely your IT people, they do need to know. And if they're responsible, hardworking individuals, they should be trained. Not everybody's born knowing, but everybody has the possibility of being trained. Remember that. All right. And then finally, can't forget this one. Money, 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 money. What is your budget? What is your budget for that particular uh, department? Because sometimes they don't cough that money up. You may need another router. You may need another line that needs to get thrown out. You may not have that. You may not have that. All right. But you may have the resources to send somebody to a school or send somebody to a particular class to learn a particular subject so they can make your network more efficient. Okay. Or hire somebody or consultant, let's say, to go ahead and do that. So a lot of things depend, especially when you're doing this particular type of network where it gets very complex because. All you're looking at is at a picture, but you're not looking at all the different policies that you have to create on that firewall that you're going to allow in or allow out, okay? Where well, you're running, let's say, here, Ether Channel, but you could be running a uh, routing protocol there as well. You could be running VLANs in there as well, all right? This is also have the VLANs down here. So there's a million different things, and then you have your wide uh, area network protocols that are going out. So you could be running Metro Ethernet coming out. You could be running an MPLS cloud, all right? You could be running BGP going out to your ISP. So there's many, many, many different things that are now happening in these two layers. So now, just to put it simply again, it is only, there's no lab in this. There's no lab in this, okay? If I go crazy, I may just do a final lab just like this and make it configure all that. But other than that, that's all you need to know about the collapse layer. Then it went from a Cisco three layer model to a Cisco two layer model. And which is that two layer model? Core distribution layer and the access layer. That's it. That's all there's to that. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.